we'll just do a test in one day. Uh, he called it a test. Um, and, and uh, you know, we'll see how it works out. He said the worst possible thing is we'll end up with a cool little short film and, you know, part ways. Um, and, you know, maybe you'll agree to do this. And I, I thought, what are you going to do in a day? I've been on movie sets. In a day, you, you know, you, you have somebody fill a coffee cup. And in 10 hours, he shot an entire three-page short story of mine. This so-called test happened to include two very accomplished actors and be a completely polished piece of work that's going to be in the movie. I let her hear my footsteps. She only goes stiff for a moment. Robert just basically came to me and said, I'm doing this graphic novel, putting it and making it into a movie. I don't have the rights to it, and uh, I need somebody to come down and help me convince him to, like... Let us go ahead with it. You're sick of running. You're ready to face what you have to face. But you don't want to face it alone. When I saw it, it just looked so amazing. It was just so great. And it was like true Frank Miller drawings. It's like, you know, it was a real Sin City uh, cityscape. And it became a great sales tool to take around to show all the other actors, because mm -hmm. we were moving so fast, to say, this is the book, and this is what we're going to do. In fact, here's the opening mm -hmm. into the credits. And we'd show mm -hmm. people like Bruce Willis, uh -huh. the sequence. And it already had his name in the credits. I started watching it, and about a minute in, I, uh, I said, hang on a second. I hit pause. I said, uh, whatever else I see on this, I just want you to know that uh, I'm in. I want to do this. Action. Here we go. Back to the direction. And go. When we were casting all these parts, strange things started happening. People showed up who looked like my drawings. When we first see Hardigan, he's an honest cop, which is a rare thing in Sin City. He's he's unsettled because there's one remaining thing that, that he hasn't taken care of. I play Nancy Callahan. She is an exotic dancer who was kidnapped when she was a kid. Maybe I should drive. Not a chance. Nobody but me can keep this heat running. If in her wildest dreams, her, her knight in shining armor ever comes back, she's ready for him. Blood for blood, part of Gala. Playing a guy named Marv. Mickey Rourke is just so beyond fantastic for this role. I'll be right out. It's almost like Frank Miller gave birth to him, all right? You know, he drew Marv and gave and, and created an actor who could play Marv. We sat and talked for about half an hour, and the only note I was able to write down was, met Mickey Rourke, he is Marv. When I was looking through the comic book, I didn't know which character he wanted me to do. Then I saw it was the character of Marv, and I got real excited because he was this far-out-looking cat that had some interesting things to say and do, and I thought, wow, this is going to be different and fun, and it's been a real hoot, you know? every day working. Shelly sort of links together all three stories. She's uh, she's a waitress at the local watering hole. She's scared out of her mind, but um, trying at the same time to be an independent woman. Keep your hands to yourself for a good little pickle. You looked at that and you went, that's some pretty powerful stuff, mister. <laughs> that's straight out of your book, Frank. <laughs> In the car, baby. We'll just talk. It'll be nice. Since that character you know, became a hero and then got lost in the glory of it, turned into a bully, you know, a self-centered madman, you know, with a license to kill. You're making a big mistake, man. A big mistake. You know, a perfect villain. And, uh, and he gets his too. I play Gail, who is comfortable walking around in thigh-high leather strap stilettos um, with an Uzi and handcuffs. And Frank's an insane man for drawing it. Dwight is he's violent, but um, he is a bit of a... He's got a bit of a soft spot to go. I forgot how quick you are. Great. Yeah, it was great. That's really great. Cut. Cut it. Cut, cut. Very good. Cut. <laughs>
<laughs> it was fascinating working with Quentin. Robert always talks about like three projects in advance, and at some point he mentioned it once, like just in passing. I didn't want to tell him what it was yet because I didn't have the rights to it yet. But I wanted him to come down and, you know, shoot a short story for it. So he could try out digital, so he could see how it is to work with actors in a digital realm, and, and kind of, and I thought he would like the source material once he found out what it was. Well, remember you, you actually, you showed up uh, at the editing room for a, a spotting session, you walked in with Frank Miller. And, so this is and that was when I realized, <laughs> uh, one, I was like, Frank Miller, all right, you know, uh, my assistant editor is a gigantic comic book geek, and like, it was like one of the happiest days of his life. And I even remember as we go into the room, he was outside in the room, and I said, like, It's an exciting thing to try and turn into a film. Honestly, audiences are going to be blown away. Can't wait to see how it's done. You know, really can't, because uh, I think it's going to be a really special little thing that he's done. In a lot of ways, this movie is quite literally like having a dream come true. <laughs> down the right back alley in Sin City and you can find anything. And there you have it. That's dope. I think that's crazy that uh, who was it? Uh, they said Josh Hartnett and Bruce Willis and um, the director. What's his name? Robert. Robert, Robert yeah. Rodriguez. They're, they kind of filmed that first. And then they're like, oh, let's show this to people and see what they think. I'm actually going to get into that in the Swan Facts. And that, I mean, that's pretty crazy, though, how they did that. Yeah, he did a, basically it the was pilot, a, pretty a, much. A test, a test, some test screenings, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and he went around and he kind of uh, was like, yo, I want to do this. I don't have the rights for it, but uh, I really do want to mm -hmm. get Frank Miller on board. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. Yeah. Cool. You guys want to do some song packs? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Hmm. All right. <laughs> you know that guy, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so, Robert shot the opening scene with Hartnett before having the rights to the film. Author Frank Miller avoided Robert uh, initially wanting nothing to do with Hollywood. Hmm. Wow. Upon meeting at a bar where Robert presented his short to Frank, things began to click nice. and, and kind of float in motion. Yeah. Um, Robert Rodriguez did all the music for the film. Nice. That's sick. That's, That's awesome. That's what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Uh, DIY, for sure. Most of the cast never actually interacted on set. Oh. So when you watch stuff like... Um, What's an example? Uh, Mickey Rourke and Elijah Wood. Their fight, completely edited. Really? They Ooh, never wow. actually met each other or fought or did any stunts at all. That's crazy. They did stunts, but uh, they were shot uh, separate. Doubles? Body doubles. Wow. That's moving You can't tell at all. That's crazy, no. <laughs> I'd be thrown off by that. I would think so, too, but yeah. I mean, they are actors. That's their... Mm -hmm. That's kind of funny, though, uh, you know, probably having someone say, like, well, how was it working with um, Elijah Wood? I, I don't know. I didn't really work with him. I worked with a guy who kind of looked like him when we were fighting. That's about it. Pretty much. <laughs> uh, the, the swords used by the character Miho were the same props used in the Kill Bill films. No way. That's sick. Does it have the actual Hattori Hanzo... I don't think they ever do any kind of uh, close-ups, close but uh, I guess he was like, "Here, use these props because he had them. He has them on display, like in his garage." Yeah, there's. I remember seeing one close-up, but I didn't. I wasn't looking out for it. But she uh, circles behind Dwight. Oh, when she, when, oh, and, and she, yeah, just a little thumb click, and she's the sword a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, I'm gonna have to go back and check that out. Hattori Hanzo's steel. One second. All right. Uh, Jessica Alba's character, Nancy Callahan, was originally supposed to 
appear nude in the film. After realizing this later, she refused. But both Frank and Robert overlooked this and modified her appearance, which is why she's just uh, kind of dressed uh, clad Mm -hmm. rather than... uh, um, Mm -hmm. She's more tasteful, I feel like, Mm -hmm. than anybody else in the film, right? She has a chap song. (laughs) She signed on without knowing. So she signed on so quick she didn't know. Ah. Yeah, if if you've read the books before, Nancy's almost naked the entire time. At least topless. Yeah, all uh, the the entire time mm-hmm. <laughs> that she shows up. Uh, Tarantino was brought on to direct a scene during the Big Fat Kill where Dwight has a convo mm-hmm. with Jackie Boy when he's uh, he's already a corpse. <laughs> yeah, and they're they're kind of driving down the road mm-hmm. to uh, to the tar pits. Tar pit. right? mm-hmm. And um, for anybody who's familiar with uh, Tarantino's work, you can kind of uh, really, really See tell. It, yeah. Because it's got this kind of offbeat humor, mm-hmm. uh, and it's a little, it's shot a little differently than everything else. But yeah, I really enjoy that a little bit. Um, the late Brittany Murphy shot all her material in just one day. What? Oh, that's crazy. Despite being in a bunch of uh, the Seems, movie. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Wow. This guy shoots. Incredibly fast <laughs> and an efficient, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot uh, your little pecker off. <laughs> ben, uh, Benicio del Toro wanted to look more like his character, so he requested nose and chin prosthetics. Huh. He also filled in his eyebrows to look more like a uh, universal monster because he has a, a huge affinity for Wolfman and yeah, Dracula said the Wolfman and everything. Uh, Johnny Depp was originally supposed to play Jackie Poi's role. <laughs> but uh, because of a prior uh, engagement or whatever he was working on, he couldn't do it. Probably. <laughs> probably, yeah. He was, uh, yeah, he was busy at the time. Jackie Sparrow. <laughs> like, uh, I often wonder, like, what would these movies be like had uh, the cast been different? Um, certain scenes required color licensing to add depth. For example, Dwight's car isn't red in the books, but uh, when they, I guess when they when they try to put it in the the film, or I guess when they were searching for that type of car that he uses mm-hmm. in the book, right? Uh, the the only color they could find was red, and when they uh, kind of configured that to uh, black and white, mm-hmm. it didn't look. Nice. It, mm. I guess it looked washed out. Yeah. So then they opted to uh, to you to keep the red in there, uh-huh. which is why um, that happened. Makes sense. Steve Buscemi, uh, aka Mr. Pink, yeah. was uh, originally imagined for the part of Yellow Bastard. No way. Oh, that would have been yeah, crazy. I knew it. I didn't know it, but I, I guess it was the <laughs> But. Uh, but um, I guess his uh, he had talked about it with his wife, and she kind of said, you know, I don't know if this is the right move for you this late in your career. How is this going to affect you later on down the road? So he, uh, yeah. he didn't do it. Oh. <laughs> Frank and Robert used uh, the panels of the graphic novel for storyboards while filming. Hmm. This is why uh, there's n- no screen uh, writing credit given in the beginning of the, the mm-hmm. film when you mm. see it just says from the mind of uh, Frank Miller but yeah. no, there was no real script re- uh, written they just took the kind of dialogue yeah. straight from the books which is insane mm. uh, Frank Miller actually has a cameo for anybody who doesn't know yeah. what he looks like uh, in the um, Hard Goodbye story mm. he's the priest Oh really? And the confessional. Yeah, he says uh, he tells Marv, you know, you should ask if uh, if uh, this corpse of a slut is, is worth, worth dying. dying for. Worth dying yep. for. Worth That's killing for. Worth going to hell for. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the film is shot with green screens besides uh, a few pieces like Hardigan's Cell, Katie's Bar, and Shelley's Apartment. Those were all actual sets. Everything else is fake. Okay. Elijah Wood's chin was altered to give him a more menacing presence. <laughs> Too soft. They're like, no, you still look like a little kid. <laughs> um, the wolf from the the hard goodbye story was actually a biter, so they had to shoot uh, everything with the uh, with the dog 
um, at separate times. So oh, everything okay. you saw is kind of intercut to look like they're interacting, but he never actually was on set with Mickey or Elijah oh, or anybody. Like he would attack people? No, but I, I feel like if you get too close, he would, uh, when they say that, yeah, he would, oh, okay. he, he was dangerous. Okay. Like he's trained, but kind of a wild card. So he was a real animal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, the rain... Every uh, all the rain scenes, uh, obviously, I'm sure you guys know, uh, rain doesn't fall like that, mm-hmm. and it's all placed uh, digitally. Digital. Yeah. And uh, the reason for that is when.